Hey guys, I'm in the Great Hall for the People, and let's talk about the economy today, shall we? When you think of a country's economy, what's the first thing that pops into your head? Perhaps it's the GDP. And I bet many who are watching the two sessions share this feeling with me that、uh, that GDP target, that figure in the government work report, is the item that we want to know. Now we have that figure for 2023, around five percent. There are two factors that people need to be aware of when talking about GDP target. First, it's the actual mathematical estimation of a country's economic change. Second, it projects an image. It lets the world knows whether the country is doing good or not, whether it's how is its market. People sometimes focus too much on the second one. And believe me, there are more than enough ways to paint a bleak image of an economy in any condition, good or bad. So to understand it, let's pull back a bit. In 2020, China's GDP grew by 2.3 percent. In 2021, it was 8.4 percent. 2022, 3 percent. Those were abnormal years, so you get the big fluctuations. But if you add that up and average it out. You'd find a 4.6 percent average growth rate, not at all a bad figure compared to most other major economies during the same period. Based on China's past figures and the onward trend, but also with the gloomy global situation, 5 percent is a pretty reasonable target, isn't it? What we need to see is that yes, China is still setting a numerical value, and that's very important. But we are more about quality than quantity now. How do you measure quality? Uh, there are a lot of ways, but it's hard to summarize everything into a single number. Take patents, for example. In 2022, China had registered more than 4.2 million valid invention patents. It's the first country to pass the 3 million threshold, and about 1.3 million of them were high-value patents. That increased by 24.2%. Innovation is the primary driving force for development, right? And what? Who does development benefit? Me, you, others here. It's the general public. It's everybody. Then, if we look at the climate, in 2021, China's CO2 emissions per unit GDP dropped by 34.4 percent from 2020. And in 2022, it further reduced 2.26 billion tons of domestic carbon dioxide emissions. That's also an increase in quality, isn't it? China is the world's largest 5G network. Its 5G users account for 80% of the world's total. That's also a quality, isn't it? Given that we basically live on our smartphones these days. I mean, case in point. I'm filming this now, and I can just send it out right after I hit the end button because the internet is good and the connections is perfect. And then there are other issues like food security, for example. China's green production has stabilized at more than 1.3 trillion jin for seven consecutive years, and it aims to keep at that level for 2023. I mean, no one can say that food is not. A part of the economy, and especially in today's world, food security is more crucial than ever. That's how you should look at the Chinese economy these days. The GDP number is important; it's a numerical value that you can compare and contrast easily. But the economy is about a whole lot more, and a broader look gives you a more accurate picture of it.